Welcome back, comic book collectors and enthusiasts. My name is Brandon. You're watching Mon Comics. Welcome back, everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, as of when this video drops, I have officially will be on vacation. I usually take about a week in the summertime around the 4th of July to hang out with my family and friends, bring the kids to the parade, and just relax and unwind uh, through our summer uh, of my job. It's pretty intense with what we're going through uh, working at the local college before the kids come back. Uh, so that being said, I am thoroughly enjoying this vacation. I've been reading comics and making some content. Uh, this week's Mon Mail, uh, pretty cool. Uh, the first book actually isn't Mon Mail. I check Facebook for local shows that might be happening around me, comic book shows, collectibles, anything that I might be able to find books at. And a few months ago, I saw one up in Watertown, New York, which is a two-hour drive from, from me, uh, from where I live, up to there. Uh, it's north of me. And then, so that means if I went, it'd be a two-hour drive back. So it's four hours just in a car. Uh, so I commented and asked uh, on their post if they were going to have any comic book vendors. And they said, yeah, there should be a couple of people bringing comic books. And I was like, okay, I'm kind of on the fence of going, you know, just a couple of vendors. And then a gentleman uh, reached out to me or just commented and said, hey, I have some comic books you might be interested in. So I messaged him and sure enough, he had three pretty awesome Silver Age uh, Spider-Man books. And I said, yeah, I'm definitely interested. Uh, would you be willing to meet me at that show? And now I'm like, okay, this is definitely a like good incentive to go up to the show. And he was like, sure. Uh, so I made the Saturday trek. Uh, I've left, you know, six or seven in the morning uh, to get up there. I wasn't planning on spending too much time. And the books that he had were so good that I was just, you know, just picking them up would be great. So I got to the show and he wasn't there yet. And I went in and looked around. There was one vendor with comic books. It was primarily a card show. So, you know, a little uh, sad after knowing how far I'd have to drive, but this gentleman did not disappoint. He was local to there. His mother just collected a lot of stuff and had bought these books and just saved on to them. Two of the books I've already traded away towards uh, other books that I really wanted because I don't particularly collect this title a ton. Uh, but I did keep one because of the uh, importance of the artist who did the cover art, and he's my favorite Spider-Man artist. I am talking about... Amazing Spider-Man, number 52, from 1967, written by Stan Lee and cover art by the late, great John Romita Sr. Uh, John Romita uh, drew my favorite Spider-Man. Um, I just love how he, he captured Spidey. And uh, I decided to keep uh, one book out of the three that I picked up uh, just to, you know, in remembrance of um, John Romita. And I do, I do enjoy Spider-Man a lot. And I actually saw a recent interview with Romita. It was really, you know, after he passed away, there's a lot of stuff popping up about him. And it was really cool because he said that if you're drawing Spider-Man standing on the ground or sitting or just on the ground in general, you're wasting him. So we always try to to draw him in some spectacular pose, no pun intended, flying through the city, upside down, any way he could contort him to show you, you know, his abilities. And I thought that was a really cool insight from an artist, an iconic artist. So I definitely just want to keep this one in my collection. Uh, rest in peace, John Romita Sr. Uh, you were an awesome artist. Uh, you definitely breathed some amazing life into Spider-Man. So I was very grateful that even I made this two hour drive there and two hour drive back, I at least picked up uh, some great Silver Age Spider-Man so it was not wasted. So first one wasn't even Mon Mail, I went out and hunted for this one. So Amazing Spider-Man 52 added to the collection. Let's keep going with Spider-Man. Uh, this book was very near and dear to my heart. I remember buying it as a kid in 93 off the racks. It was the time of hollow foil covers, and it is it does feature, you know, my favorite Spider-Man villain, which is the Green Goblin. I just, I remember as a kid being mind blown that like the webs, the way that the, the light shined off them. And it was amazing to me. And they're, one of my favorite panels ever is in this book. And I'll put it up here. It's just the goblins, like it shows the goblin coming in on the glider. Uh, but the panel that I love is just his face and he's just saying Mary Jane. And uh, really cool as a kid, stuck with me. So I got this from Nova Collectibles 22 on Whatnot. He had it in his buy it now and he just kept saying make offers, make offers. So I think he was asking 13 or 14 and I offered 10 bucks. 10 bucks to get a piece of my childhood remembrance back was well worth it. And uh, this is the 200th issue of Spectacular Spider-Man, a giant size 200th issue. And I remember I ruined this book because I cut out a lot of the pages as a kid and put them on my wall or on notebooks because I just loved the art. 
not worth a ton, not even graded worth a ton. And there's some spine ticks and damage to it. I mean, it looks like a clean copy, but it's probably like a nine two with the sp color breaking spine ticks and nine four. Uh, so yeah, so this was written by J.M. Demetis and cover by uh, Sal Busema. You can see he signed it down here. And uh, just really one of this back in my collection. Uh, it really captures the 90s uh, hologram covers. This is when, uh, you know, the, um, the Marvel cards holograms were huge. And I had those two and uh, just really was happy to see this and get it back. So Spectacular Spider-Man number 200 back in the collection. More Spider-Man. What's going on, Mon Comics? You're the Fantastic Four guy. I know, but the deals were just too good, and I do love some good Spidey comics, especially being a key collector. This is a key. Web of Spider-Man 36. I got this from a gentleman who was having a Facebook sale, and I got this for a real... I think he was asking 15. I offered 10. Uh, it has black suit Spidey, but more importantly, it is the first appearance of Tombstone. This is from 1987, written by the great Jerry Conway, cover art by Alex Saviak and Keith Williams. Uh, really cool cover. You don't see Tombstone on the cover, but um, I really... Confession, I watched Into the Spider-Verse lately for the first time. It was just magnificent. I loved the uh, the illustration-like art in it, uh, the comic book-like uh, style they use for it. Loved the story, loved Miles Morales, uh, Spider-Gwen. I just loved how they did it. And I loved that Tombstone was a henchman for the Kingpin. And again, Tombstone was on Marvel cards when I was a kid. And uh, when I saw this book was up for grabs, I had to have it. Pretty nice condition. Probably not going to get it graded. Uh, just a nice key to add my collection as I'm always trying to add keys. So Web of Spider-Man 36, first appearance of Tombstone. Uh, since I've started YouTube, I've made a lot of friends, a lot of people that love comics, love the art, and it's been really the highlight of this. And uh, one friend I made uh, by the name of Colton reached out to me on Instagram. We were just kind of talking about comics and, you know, what we collected. He's a little bit older than me, a dad as well. You know, we all connect on these levels outside of comics and then should see that the comics draw us into a... Uh, you know, one one focus, if you will. And uh, he said, I have some Man-Thing books I want to send you. And I said, you know, I really, can I trade you for them? Can I buy them from you? I just don't like getting stuff. I'd rather give something back. And I've had a couple people do this to me. But he sent them, and then I get the return address, and then I'm able to send something cool that they don't expect. So I will be doing that. Colton, this was amazing. So Man-Thing, uh, his first appearance, if, you, if you're not familiar with it, was Savage Tales 1. And that was from 1971. I don't have that book yet. It is on my list. The Man Thing behind me is his first solo series. But the first time Man Thing had a solo story was in Adventures into Fear, uh, Adventure into Fear 10. Um, so Colton was nice enough to send me Adventure into Fear 12. These were all written by Steve Gerber, who is the signature writer for Man Thing. And this cover is really cool because it's a Jim Starlin cover. And I am obsessed with it. It is just so cool looking. Pretty clean book. He's like, oh, they're like lower to mid grade. This is a beautiful book. And uh, I wasn't going to go after the Adventure into Fear run. I was trying to focus on the, solo, on the solo run. But I think since Colton helped me kickstart, I'm going to go after him. So this is issue number 12. These are all from 1973. Issue number 14. And then after issue 13, it's still Steve Gerber writing. But uh, Val Myrick uh, was the uh, the artist for uh for these issues so really cool number 14 he really kick-started uh, my collection and then also uh, number 17 with uh, the sky being called Wondar very cool again Steve Gerber and Val Myrick uh, did the art for it um, so these were really cool Adventure into Fear number 11 is when Steve Gerber came up with the iconic line whatever knows fear burns at the touch of the man thing so that's some very iconic stuff happening in uh, the ten, issues 10 through 19 that it runs. Uh, so I got three, so I might as well go after the other six. But Colton, can't thank you enough. We've chatted online. We've Skyped a couple times, and it's just been great to... I just love, you know, nerding out. I don't have any friends around here that read comics. So it's great to talk with different people within the hobby, uh, whether it's Instagram or FaceTime or Skype. So Colton, can't thank you enough. I look forward to uh, more trades because you're definitely getting something in the mail and uh, more conversations conversations about comics so thank you man last book up now we're getting back to mon comics fantastic four 41 from 1965 lee uh stanley writing jack kirby cover 
uh, Frightful Four at the bottom down here. And this is the portrayal of Ben Grimm. Uh, ben Grimm gets uh, sick and tired of being the Fantastic Four's workhorse, if you will, and uh, leaves and gets recruited and joins the Frightful Four. And uh, they get into a fight with the Fantastic Four. And the Fantastic Four doesn't want to use all of their powers to, to hurt their friends. So they actually uh, get defeated by the Frightful Four. And it continues in the next issue. So this I got from a trade with my buddy Joseph, who traded me the Man Thing issue in my previous video that was signed. And I needed a, my book was higher value, so I needed to pick one. And um, this one, uh, Big Spine Roll. I'm sending this to my buddy Jeff over at Comic Spa. I'm not grading this. I just need to see if I can get the spine roll pressed out so it's a little more neat. There's uh, wax pencil writing on here that might come off. I don't know, but scratch another one off the list. I'm planning, since I'm on vacation, to get out my Fantastic Four books and take a, uh, a, a family photo, if you will, and I'll post it to my Instagram, which you can find. I'll leave the tag right here. It's at Mon Comics. So I want to see. I think I'm at like 37 or 38 issues. And I also want to count, go through my videos and count and see kind of as an experiment. I'm six months into this, uh, well, six months into the year. I started YouTube in February, but I want to see how many uh, books, comic books I have acquired since then, just based on my videos. So I'm going to definitely talk about that in an upcoming video. But the next video is really important. The next video I'm filming on July 2nd, and it will drop uh, the following Friday, which I think is the 8th. Uh, my friend Anthony, uh, who I talked about previously, who was uh, kind of a coworker of mine, who uh, cosplays as a Galvarino Predator, is coming down for an interview in the Creation Station. We were going to do something like FaceTime or Skype and record it, but he was like, I'll just drive down for an hour. Uh, it's like an hour drive, so I'll just come down. So I'm very excited about this because not only are we going to get to talk about his cosplay, about what we love about Predator and Predator and comics, but we are giving away two items. He's already shown me what he's giving away. He does not know what I'm giving away, but it complements his first item well. Uh, this will be a U.S. only giveaway, unfortunately, because they are items that I don't want to take the chance of getting uh, lost while going international and I don't want to make someone pay the shipping because it would be pricey. So we've got two great giveaway items. And then we're also tying this in to create it as a charity event. And we will talk about that together uh, when the video comes out. And uh, people will see how they can uh, help a charity without having to do anything other than just leave a comment. So if you like my content, if you want to check out that video and see an interview next time, if you could go ahead and uh, like this video and hit subscribe, leave me a comment. Which one of these books uh, did you like the best? Was it the Silver Age Spider-Man? Did anyone collect these in the 90s, the hollow covers? Was it picking up another key? Anyone else been gifted comics by a friend? That, that was so kind, Colton. Thank you. And another Fantastic Four book. So love chatting with you in the comments. I appreciate the love and support. This is awesome. I hope everyone's having a great summer, having a great time collecting and reading comics. And until next time, keep reading those comics, and I'll see you then.